And but out. Here we are live. Pow. Boom, boom, pow. We here. We up in here. We ain't going nowhere. Big Will TV <laughs> and Charlotte Van Horn from Black Expats in Panama. Panama. What's going on, Miss Charlotte? Hey, Big <laughs> Will. Nothing, man. Just chilling out here in Panama. Good to be with you always, even if it's virtual. You know it. Yeah, likewise, likewise. You know, I, I I love everything that you're doing, Charlotte. Love supporting the Black Expats of Panama events. They're always fun, always exciting. I'm always getting to meet new people. It is yeah. a beautiful thing. It, uh, you you've made my Black sit to Panama easy and successful. So I want to appreciate oh, thank and thank you. you for that in front of everybody. Now everybody, <laughs> now everybody know. And you know something, I want to say. Um, before we even start talking is congratulations to you, Will. I mean, look at all that you're doing. You've been doing this for about a year and you look like you are show enough, I mean, TV producer or something. So congratulations to you. Congratulations on meeting your goal and exceeding your goal of 1,000 uh, viewers on YouTube or subscribers Aww. on YouTube. I'm super proud of you, man. Keep doing Thank what you. you're doing and being your authentic self. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that, and I feel extremely blessed. Thanks for all the support. I definitely could not have made it without the support of you and your group and the folks who are interested in coming to Panama to visit, coming to Panama to live half of the year, or like us, getting the hell out and making your books. <laughs> Peace. See you. <ya. laughs> Don't say <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Two fingers. You know, I, I'm at the point now, I'm like, I keep pushing our going back date to go pick up storage because it's like, you know, I love Panama and I keep seeing, no offense, but it is what it is. I keep seeing the craziness of, of what's going on in the state. So, like, we were supposed to go back Memorial Day weekend, but as soon as that federal judge did away yeah. with the mask yeah. mandate, yeah. Oh, that's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's sort of like when my daughter, uh, I remember taking my daughter out when um, she had just got to the point where she was moving around and everything. And I said, you know what? I can't take her out no more. I, I got to train her. Not, I got to train her what to do when she out and got that freedom. That's kind of how I feel about going back to the States. I just need the States to have a little bit more time to get herself together. Okay. So she, we, need, we need to retrain some stuff going on in the States before I can really, really want um, to be there. So I, I, I feel you, you know, we have a place in Florida and um, you know, we get there when we can and everything like that. But I love it here. I do. And I mean, I'm not talking about the United States or anything. I'm just saying that it, you would have to be really, really blind not to be able to see that something crazy is happening. There's a shift that's happening that we need to be ahead of. And I'm just grateful for, you know, for the people who have had the foresight to say, you know what, maybe it's time to do a new thing. And that is what being a black expat is all about and having the choices to be, to be able to make that choice to say, you know what, I'm going to do a new thing. Um, and so I'm the, I celebrate us for being here, Will. I, I appreciate that. And, you know, like you say, we are ISS's wildest dream. And, you yes. know, to, to that point, speaking of what's going on back in the States, the reason that we're here today is to talk about an upcoming celebration. Um, we all know Juneteenth is is hitting us in June. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a holiday that marks the pivotal moment in our American history mm -hmm. that uh, uh, emancipation was recognized finally in Texas, uh, specifically Galveston, Texas, on June 19th, uh, 1865. So mm -hmm. that's more than two years after uh, the emancipation was, was written. And that's two Not extra years yeah. of hard labor and Mm -hmm. and everything so we want to celebrate that and mm -hmm. you know in america it's a uh we've turned it into a huge celebration and remembrance and, and commemorating the day and uh, i know this is a hell of a day that is really celebrated hard in texas and louisiana and alabama uh you know i, I went to school in georgia we, we got a little bit of it in georgia so it's it's really starting to grow and we really want to take the time to appreciate where we've been and where we're going because as you say you know we are now our ancestors wildest dreams we have options that our ancestors didn't have you're right 
And I'm glad that it is a holiday now in the United States. So y'all can come on down to Panama and celebrate with us. But, um, you know, I'm from New Jersey and lived in the, the more northern parts of the United States. Um, well, not really northern, northern. But anyway, I didn't know about um, Juneteenth until I happened to live in Texas. So 1995, I learned about Juneteenth only because I was in Texas, because it was years and years and years and years and years and years and years, and years later before I ever heard mention of it, you know, in, in my circles um, in D.C., Virginia, New Jersey area. So, you know, it's becoming more and more common knowledge for people. And then with the passing of the national holiday, you know, last year, it's, it's even gotten more recognition. So we just want to recognize it here. The Black expats that are here in Panama, we want to recognize that. And we're going to do it in big fashion. We're going to do it in Black expats in Panama and big wheel fashion. Folks, we've already done the inaugural catamaran yes. day trip, right? <laughs> So, so, and you we know, already taking it up a notch. Yeah, we taking it up a notch for the first time, y'all. We got yes. it in the first time. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, exactly. And so many of the people that are already that that went with us the first time have rebooked the second time. So you know what that means. I mean that that's just we we're, we're doing the thing. We and shows a lot of love. Them. We taking we're care of folks. Them. We're getting them fed. We're putting yes. a little something to. You know, in their bellies, a drink. Me, <laughs> senor. And 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 the fellowship, the, fellowship, the fellowship. You know, getting to know people. Um, you know, on a more personal level, we have one sister in our group, um, Terry Garrett. Terry is like one of our biggest supporters. And um, and the thing is, it's like I've never really had just a whole lot of time to just spend with Terry. And one of the highlights of that last catamaran um, day that we had when we went to Cologne, you know, it was, it was getting to know Terry. I got to spend a lot of time with her and that it just made it, it made it so special. So this year, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the other side where we were, I'm not this year, but this, this particular um, uh, catamaran day, instead of us being on the Caribbean side, we're going to be on the Pacific side. Yeah, we're we're about to go to the Pacific side. Uh, that's that's going to be a lot more enjoyable. I think not that the last time wasn't enjoyable, but it's you know it's a shorter commute from mm -hmm. uh, the meeting place to the marina. So you know we're going to get everybody uh, together. Let me let me get to the part where you can see what we're doing here. <laughs> Yes. We're, yes. We're go, we're and even though it. there was a commute, we turned up all the way on the bus. So. Oh, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So we had uh, what with DJ Savannah. I can't do the noise. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Savannah was spinning the ones, yes, the ones and twos baby. for us. So you know, y'all, we were grooving. We had Al yes. Green, of course. Of you course. Know. Of little course. Bill Withers you know, in there. Green is always a headliner for me, baby. Right. Al right. Green helped me get my head right. <laughs> yes, we were straight baby. partying. Oh my God! Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, and then on the boat itself, you know, uh, we had uh, this reggae soca going. Yes. And, oh my God! And like then that said, beautiful Playa Blanca. Everybody enjoyed, um, you know, getting to get off the boat at Playa Blanca. The one thing about this time, we're going to Toboga. And um, the, the wonderful thing about going to Toboga is that it may not be just a regular route that you take. And I like how the, the, um, the journey that we'll be on, we'll, we'll park behind Toboga for a little bit, give people a chance to get off the boat, you know, before we actually get to the beach. Once you get to the beach, you know, we will have um, the chairs and umbrellas reserved for us. I mean, you just show up like the royalty that we are, you know, there'll be um, co a cocktail. You get one cocktail once you get on the beach, um, or on the on the boat. It is open bar all day long. It is your lunch. It's your musica, um, and of course, you know the fun and fellowship. And the boat is a lot bigger this time. You have tables where you can sit, and um, it's just going to be a it's going to be a, a blast. The big, the big thing about this is, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Will, was you going to say something? Go ahead, bro. No, don't let no, me, no, don't no let you're me good. get greedy. Don't let Take me get it away. Greedy. Okay. The, the one thing, okay, okay, then. 
the um, the one thing that um that I like about what we're doing this time is that the boat is bigger. And so I really do like that because we was roughing it, Chad, on uh, on our catamaran the last time, even though it was just an amazing experience. I was looking to sit down and do my nails somewhere, okay? And <laughs> that kind of vibe. But this time we'll have the net, we'll have the um, we, you know, we'll have a lot more space, and it's just gonna be a real, really, really good time. Only thing with the catamarans, though, is that you got to reserve early. We have to lock it in early. Um, the catamarans are very sought after. And in case you missed it, we are talking a private. Private. <laughs> Privado. <Exclusive. laughs> Privado. Just yes. us kind of thing. So when you're talking about taking out a catamaran with just the people you want on it, that takes it to another level. So that makes us have to, the, the criteria is a little bit different. When we book it, it's a little bit different. And we got to secure it in a different way, more quickly than just a regular event. It, and let me just take a second to speak to the essence of our private nature. So, you know, Big Will and Sonia traveled the Caribbean and a lot, a lot of places before. Now, we've done Cameroon cruises, but we've always been with other people. We've always had to, you know, save our seat we're going to sit here for a second and then hopefully if we get up to go to the front of the boat to see the views going on our seat will still be back there when we get back there and then we don't know who this guy is over here doing whatever right. uh also we we took a quick tour to tubog island it's, it's right off of panama city you can take a ferry but it's just not the same i'm telling you what we're about to experience is not even close to the same the, with the ferry ride, I was with other people. Uh, I had to show them my COVID card and all that good stuff. I didn't have any access to anything. Once I got to the island, it was just me. I didn't know where to go. I'm, I'm a, I got my phone out and I'm pulling up Google and Yelp and like, what can I eat? And I had yeah. to find my own place to eat. I had to bargain uh, with the locals for a chair, and then I had to bargain for an umbrella to go with the chair. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody was speaking Spanish, right? And everybody's speaking Spanish. And, you know, I've only been here a year now. My, my Espanol right. is a lot better than it was a year ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, eight months ago, nine months ago, when I when we did this day trip to Tobago, no, it was, hold on for a second. We'll look this up on Google yeah, Translate. Exactly. Google Translate. <laughs> Google Translate, yes. So, yes. It, and the experience was only, I think, three hours. So I went out on the 11.30 a.m. ferry, and I had to come back on the 2.30 p.m. ferry mm -hmm. or else you're stuck. Mm -hmm. So what we have done is got you know, a huge catamaran, private. <laughs> Again, we can control the food. We can control the music. Y'all yes. want to stop right here? Okay, we can stop yes. right here for a second. <laughs> yes. We control the libation. The libation, everything, yes. <laughs> everything, and it's eight hours. It's a full day. I'm telling you, we're gonna wear you out. Yes, <laughs> no, no you're gonna sleep it. good. You're, yeah, gonna, take... you're gonna sleep good. And for those of you who are not in Panama City in the surrounding area at this time, for all of our our people out in Gorgona, this is a great time for y'all to come and connect. And I swear, I'm gonna get out there soon. But this is a good time for you to just go ahead and lock in because you have enough time to plan your trip out here. For those of you who are thinking about vacationing um, to Panama in, in June, it just so happened to be in June, go ahead, work that trip out so that you're here on June 17th. So come in June 16th at least so that you can spend June 17th with us on the Catamaran Day um, celebrating Juneteenth here in Panama. So we are giving y'all a lot of heads up. Um, June 17th is going to be the day, but as far as you locking in, we really kind of need y'all to do that like now, okay? So Big Will is going to put link uh, the link at the bottom for y'all to go ahead and lock in. We've made yep. it very um, uh, convenient for you that you can put in a put you can lock in with the deposit. The total amount for the day is $150, but you can lock in with $75, and you'll see that 75. on the link. You have the option $75, yes. And the link has just been posted in the comments. It's going to be on Facebook and YouTube. So everybody will have access to the link where they can go and get the deposit in so we can make sure we got everybody in place. 
so that we can have uh, an extraordinarily stellar day. It's going to be picturesque. It's going to be, you know, we're going to make some memories. We're going to meet some yeah. folks. And if you're in Panama, uh, you're a black expat visiting there, even if you're not a black expat, let me stop using that word. <laughs> if you are in Panama, <laughs> yes. uh, you are more than welcome to join us. Hit the link, come and meet some yes. folks. Uh, yeah. Share your experiences with people who are visiting because mm -hmm. I think it's vital for people to understand uh, there's a completely different way that you can live your life and do it mm -hmm. well. We are down here thriving. I can't yes. say it enough. Yes. A year and a half ago, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But now we well, are thriving. Thriving. And in the, the last interview, you know, I do a, a broadcast on blacksitradio.com every um Every Sunday, and our last our last guests were Claudia and Malcolm Maloney. And I think the one thing that I didn't stress enough about our interview with Claudia was that Claudia, the United States, had her so stressed out that she was in therapy. The reason that she ended up in Panama was because she told her therapist, "I got to get out of here." And her therapist said, "Have you thought about Panama?" Yeah. You know, so it is a real thing. And when you when you say thriving. Well, I hope that people understand that you're not just saying, for me, it's not just thriving in the sense that we are a lot, a lot more relaxed financially yes. than, than we were the, the, in the United States because our money just goes a lot further. But thriving also for me here is about that peace. Mm -hmm. It's about that peace that I have tranquil. It is about definitely that peace that I have um, living here and the fact that I want to share that with everybody that I know. And for those individuals, we talked about this recently too, for those individuals that have never experienced peace, you mm. don't know what the importance of what I just said mm. is. And I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray that the, that the Lord will bless you with the peace that surpasses your understanding mm. so that when you hear somebody say something about being in peace, you be like, I want some of that because you will know what that means and what that feels like. I remember my first moment with, with peace, feeling that peace was in 1993, September, 1993. I'll never forget that day. And I've been chasing that peace for the, ever since then, because that's how wonderful it is. And being in Panama has been the closest thing to that experience that I've ever. So, you know, I mean, I know people get tired of us just being on here talking about Lord of mercy, Panama, you know, but y'all want me to talk about them geckos. They can keep them geckos. <laughs> but besides that, you know, it's we're not going to have any geckos on the boat. We're not going <laughs> to have any geckos on the boat, please. <laughs> no, no geckos on the boat. But, but I completely understand peace in, in the thriving part of me. You hit it right on the head. Uh, the first thing that made me look at Panama was the financial aspect of it because we were interested in looking for a place that we could afford to retire mm -hmm. in a nice place. Uh, but then all the other aspects started to come in, especially after we came to visit. Uh, this is in the, the height of the pandemic. Um, we, we came here two months after getting our, our vaccines in February. I think we got vaccines two or three weeks after they, you know, we... We had a good dude uh, in Maryland. Uh, they, they had a clinic that was like, we don't care about the age. We just want to put needles in arms. So, yeah. so we, we got in that line. Yeah, so they look at our vaccine real early. And, <laughs> and, we, and, and then two months later, we are on that, uh, that red eye flight uh, that COPA has at Dulles. And it's, it's full. And this is our first time really being out the house <laughs> during yeah, COVID. So, right, right, right. So we're kirking out. We got our double face masks. We got our face shields on and everything. You know, but where some piece was that we knew everybody on the plane had a negative COVID test. So that was the first time being inside the country where we were assured that our environment was surrounded by people who were not infected. Yes. And then we landed and we saw how Panama was handling COVID and it was completely different than the, than the state. Oh, so completely different. immediately I felt peace because in the States, I'm like, oh my God, it doesn't matter how smart I am. It doesn't matter how many degrees I have. My mm -hmm. safety is dependent on the stupidest person in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You Everybody know, has to work together. We all got to work together. Yes. So if I can't get stupid over here to do what he needs to do, we all at risk. Yeah. And in Panama, it wasn't about 
individual rights. You didn't hear people complaining. They just did it because they're family, they're community minded. It's a completely different vibe. So yes, we sleep through the night now. And that was something that wasn't happening uh, yes. back home. So, you know, and then for me as a six foot two, you know, 200 and, you know, I'm getting closer to 270, so I can say it, 270 pound black man. <laughs> yes. The piece is not having to worry about my life being in danger when I drive or walk down the street. Yeah. I've been stopped by police here a couple of times and it has mm -hmm. been a pleasant experience. <laughs> yes, it's, 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 a, it's a different world, you know. When they stop us, uh, when we're traveling on the buses with our tours, <laughs> when they get to the roadblocks, I always say, turn down the music. You know, we do our like, we do our, our, our like traumatic, to... uh, post-traumatic. Um, uh, stress. What is it? Yes. Post-traumatic <laughs> stress thing. Say 5-0, 5-0, you know, <laughs> because it's never a good thing. Or a lot of times it's just not a good thing in the States. And being able to make those, to make that shift you know, to make that shift in your mind about, you know, where you are, you know, you're, ne you're never completely safe. You know, you're never going to be nowhere where all, all the police officers are, are good and, 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 and here just to protect and serve. You're never going to find that. But to be able to be more on the side of that's what you expect and that's what your experience is as opposed to the other side of it. Um, I just think it's a good place for all of us to be. I want everybody in the United States, whether they they want to come to Panama or not, to have a passport. Yes. That is my push to have. I, I, I need y'all to get your passports. If it's other things that you have that are priorities over traveling, I'm OK with that. But you can't go nowhere without a passport. Okay. And if something traumatic was to happen in the United States that you really needed to get out, are you really willing to leave your children behind? Get them grandbabies a passport too. Mm. Because if they don't have the passport, then you're not going to leave them. You're not going to leave your children behind. You're not going to leave your grandchildren behind if you don't have to. Make sure everybody has permission to travel the world. Everybody needs permission. That's what your passport is. Your passport is permission. And I don't even know if we was really, you know, playing on talking about all that. <laughs> However, Obama, look, the spirit, here, the spirit we are. <laughs> here we are, okay? And I think that it all ties in to what we're doing with Juneteenth. It takes us right back to the reason yes. we did start this call was to say that we are going to be here and we are going to be celebrating um, Juneteenth. And I think that we're going to celebrate it in a way that it's going to be, an, and you know, we're going to have a, a little bit of program because it deserves a little bit of program, and right. we're working on that. And and I think that for us to be in a place where we have made a choice about where we're living on Freedom Day is just, it doesn't get any better than that. So we want you to come and we want you to experience the freedom of being able to make that choice, mm. you know. Freedom and the the freedom and the reality that we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. We want you to be with us. We want you, we want to embrace you with all of that. Okay, and but it's a catamaran. Okay, and the catamaran can only hold but so many people. Right. Okay, so we just kind of put the word out yesterday, and we're halfway sold out already. So for y'all that want to get on board. We're gonna need for y'all to, um, you know, to make that move like now. Okay? Right now, make that move now. Seventy-five dollars gets you on the boat. Seventy-five dollars to get you yet. You can pay the get, rest later. Get, get your space uh, because we know it is like you know you wasn't expecting the, you know to drop a buck fifty today for something you want to do in June, but right. here we are. <laughs> yeah, you want you want to you want to do this though. I ain't yeah, gonna lie, yeah, you yeah, you want to do yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. You want to be on the cat and no, don't right? <laughs> right, right, right. It, and in celebrating Juneteenth, the the, the 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 traditional thing that I learned in Texas was you had to have great barbecue. And that's what we're gonna have on the boat. We're gonna have a barbecue lunch for you on the boat. They're gonna be grilling it for you. You're gonna smell it yes. while we on the way. <laughs> yes. 
see, we we are thinking, we are thinking, and you know something, Will, as black business owners, you know, like I told, I was speaking to a group last night that's coming for the May tour, and one lady said, you know, Charlotte, I have on Zoom, and she said, I have to say, y'all have been so professional, like everything, like all your responses and everything is so organized, and I was like, girl, look, I'm a black-owned business. I ain't finna have y'all out here talking about me. So when I tell you that 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 is how we operate and when when black expats in Panama and Big Will get together, we are trying to bring you an event where you can walk away saying that's my people's, you know, power to the people. That's and good. we want to make each other proud. You know, the fact that we're doing this together as, you know, two black entities, let's just say is we want to be a living, breathing example of what we could and should be doing as Black people, period. And the fact that we can be beyond the United States and still able to support and respect each other's businesses. There's so much that we can do together. Find those Black businesses that you can be sent, that you can create synergistic relationships with. You know, Big Will's, Big Will's following, our following, you know, together. It's just magic, baby. That's what you know what I'm saying. It's like black magic. You understand? Know so it. it's Umoja. It's, it's Kwanzaa. Be. It's like Kwanzaa principle, Umoja. Cooperative economics, all of it. You know, um, and so I'm proud to be, you know, working with you to um on these on these catamaran days and um looking forward to meeting new people on June 17th. So y'all get y'all tickets today and book your flights. Yes, please, please. And I and I see some of the comments. Disney Girl, Grover, I, I, my heart aches that you're going to miss this one. Fear not. We will continue to do this in the future. <laughs> we do want you on this one if you can be yes. on this one. Lord knows. Yes, yes, yes. You got, yes. you got, you got to be on this one. So we got the whole day planned out for you. Mm -hmm. If you can, uh, on the screen, you can see the itinerary. We're going to meet at 8 a.m. at the, the hotel. We're going to ride in a nice bus. We're gonna have some jokes. We're gonna hear a little, a little bit about Juneteenth as we ride on the bus. We're gonna get to the marina. It's gonna be easy to get on the boat. It's gonna be right just walking on the boat. We don't have to. If y'all saw the video from last one, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. not gonna do the little speed boat. Speed boat to fun. They fun. We're you can do them on the other side. Mm -hmm. but, but 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 yeah, on the other side. Now we do have some water taxis. You will have to get on mm -hmm. a little boat. To get off of the catamaran to get to the beach and everything, but that's that's my mad easy. Don't worry about it. Everybody mm -hmm. got a life jacket. We're going to and make so, sure you're taken care of. And also, we've also thought about the fact that we leave early from the city. So for our brothers and sisters that are in Boquete, places further out from the city, Coronado, Gorgona, you know. You can, if you want to stay at Torres de Alba, which is Black Expats in Panama favorite um, hotel, uh, we have arranged for you to receive a discount on your lodging. So if you want to stay at Torres de Alba and get a discount on your lodging the night before or even, you know, the, or two days, if you like, just let us know. Um, Derek Lashley is is here. He is our executive there and his brother is here to serve us. And he always does. And he loves being a part of Black Expats in Panama. So we also have that um, available for you as well. Beautiful. Now, I just see a comment here. I'm going to put it up on the screen because I want to make sure everybody understands. Everybody's what? welcome. My man, <laughs> my man says he's Panamanian and he wants to be able to go. Greg, bienvenidos, hermano. Uh, por favor. I don't know how to say get your butt on the boat, but get your butt on the boat. <laughs> oh, listen. You know, me and more, absolutely. And even on the on the um on the last uh, catamaran day that we did i mean like christina is is panamanian we didn't have we had a much smaller group but we absolutely would love to have you know our our brothers and sisters from panama absolutely and i mean i always want people to know that when we say black expats in panama it's just it's just, it's not saying that everybody else is excluded. No. It's saying that you're, if you're a black expat coming to Panama, we're here to help. You know, we're here to make you feel welcome, you know, but at the same time, we want to 
um, have relationships with uh, returning Panamanians, you know, local Panamanians. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we got a couple of Panamanians on the boat already, y'all. Fred, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, so absolutely nothing, nothing but love, um, Gregorius. And, and I, I love what you touched upon because you know some of my fall. I get that in the comments from some of my followers. What is Blackset? Uh, you know, you know, Blackset is Black Exit. Well, can I participate? Look, it is not an exclusionary uh, tone. It is something that I created my channel. Big Will TV and the show Blacks to Panama because there were no black male, well, there was a few black male space, excuse me, a couple of black male uh, perspectives on Panama in a sea <laughs> in an entire ocean exactly. of exactly. perspectives. So we're, we're at home, we're doing all the research, we're trying to make sure we got everything, all our I's dotted and T's crossed and we're consuming video after video after video and we yes. didn't see ourselves reflected in the video. Yes. And after spending 50 years in the United States of America, I know what it feels like to not be seen. Things are not made for us. It's like that Band-Aid. They just came out. <laughs> they, they just came out with the dark skin Band-Aid. Right. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's just because we couldn't find Band-Aids to fit our skin, we created our own shows and our own mm -hmm. Facebook groups so that we can tell each other, hey, this is where you can come for safer information. It's like the Green Book. If anyone knows the history yes. of the Green Book, uh, you know, I can't remember if it was during the 20s or during the Depression. I'm just going to say back in the day, when mm -hmm. before Google and people had smartphones, uh, black people had to have a guide to tell us where it was safe for to us go. to travel. Yes. Where is it safe for you to get gas? Where is it safe yes. for you to spend the night? Oh, you yes. just passed Philadelphia, homie. You got at least two more hours to go before you get to the next safe oh, place. Make sure you're rested. Place. Yeah. That is what our channels are. It, mm -hmm. We're not doing this to exclude other people. We're just mm -hmm. shining the light, letting people know, hey, this is a safe space. Ask your questions because you will be seen. Everyone is invited. Everyone is loved. Lord knows we're multicultural. <laughs> more multicultural than you ever know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and 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 you know in Panama, and I think that you know what African Americans um, do just just by our experience is some of the first questions that some people ask is that where do the black people go? And it's really not that kind of party here. It's no. really not. But I'm not judging you. For asking that question, because that is what we know, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case, first of all, Panama is very melanated. And one of the reasons that I like, you know, being here is that I don't stand out as a foreigner because there are so many people in Panama that look like me, you know. And um, I think that one of the things about having the whole Black expats thing is the same reason I started Black Expats in Panama. I just didn't see things that resonated with me. You know, things that I was going to ask as a Black woman. And we're used to having to create our own. Period. Mm -hmm. If we in the United States never created Black this or Black that, you know, historically Black universities and stuff, we'd be about some uneducated, <laughs> nowhere to live. You know what I'm saying? We'd Can't have no clothes. People. We have had to kind of make that way for ourselves. And when you get to a place and you say something from color purple and everybody can laugh, then you know, you're like, this can be home too. Yeah. You know, so it's a broadened experience, but it's nice to just kind of, you know, feel at home. I just it thought is. of something for the boat. Can we do like a color purple? Quote contest on the boat. Listen, I, I might we might have to pull out. I have those cards of the black card. Oh my god, black card. I got that game somewhere around here. I might have to bring that, <laughs> please. Yes. please. and it's I, just things that we can connect on, and it just adds to your experience. You know, it's not, you know, we're not trying to get nowhere and isolate ourselves where it's just you know, black expats from the United States. Uh-uh. 
But the oh. fact that we are here, the fact that we can do an old school jammy, jammy cabaret and people know what that means, you know, is it makes it more home for us. You know, oh. not trying to change anything about what Panama is doing, but bringing, bringing parts of ourselves as a group, you know, here with us. It's just, it's a happy place. I'm just it's in a happy place. Here's a comment for you, Charlotte. This is right up your alley. Don't forget bad hair. <laughs> oh, yes. We know we know about the bad hair. There is no bad hair. You know, right. we all got good hair. Somebody used to say something about what's bad hair? My, my hair be on the corner at night robbing people. Um, but yes, yeah, so there, there's just um so many things that we see culturally that we can connect to when somebody say something like, let me get my children out of here, you know, go right to color purple, you know, right. and things like that. So, you know, just that kind of stuff. Everybody's well. And, and Charlotte, let me, let me share something to you that, that touched my heart. So when we go out, I run into repeat offenders in the wild. You know, they recognize mm -hmm. me. Maybe I got my mask on and they're trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. But then it's like, oh, wait a minute, you're big will. We're in Gold Coast for brunch. That's most most of the time when it happens. And a couple from Canada, a white couple from Canada, came up on me. And I knew it was like, okay, they're coming up the same way everybody else comes up. And when they told me that they've been watching my videos and they had just moved into Coronado Bay because they saw this where we were living, I was so incredibly touched because I was like, oh, yes. my God, thank yes. you so much. Yes. Yes. I'm so happy that you're able to to be fed because the information is universal. Just because I call a black, so that's referring to me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Me and my wife, we're leaving, but so by all means, you know. And there are white people in uh, black expats, well, other people in uh, black expats in Panama group. And I'll be honest with you, you know, sometimes when folk asked to join the group when everybody asked to join the group and that's why i know i know sometimes it takes a minute y'all to get in the group but we actually this is how we're keeping the group quality because we just don't approve everybody eh, and and sometimes i'll look at your other intentions you know what you're doing on your facebook page you know just kind of shows your intention sometimes and sometimes the intention ain't you know what i'm saying the intention looked like, now, nah, why would you want to be on this page? But then there's some some people that I see other things that I say, well, they are open minded. You know, they they you know what I'm saying? And it, and it just makes it a little bit easier. But, you know, for the most part, we definitely don't discriminate. We've had enough of that. You know, we've experienced enough of that on our own. And even when um, black expats come to Panama and some of the things that I've seen some people do, I've had to revert revert back to that cliche, hurt people, hurt people. Yep. And don't bring that hurt here. You know, no. come here with an open mind. Come here with an open mind, with an open heart. Every time that somebody treats you in a way that you'd be like, okay, was it or wasn't it? Give it the benefit of the doubt at least initially, because sometimes you, you know, people will treat you in a certain way and you be like, okay, your first instinct is, okay, I see where we going. Okay. Cause right. I'm, I'm black. So that's okay. That's how, that's how you treating the sister side, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that. And whereas, you know, so give it the benefit of the doubt, not to say it's not that all the time, but give it the benefit of the doubt. This is not the United States. Thank the Lord. No, it's not. No, it's not. So, folks, I just put the link in the, the chat again, and it will also be associated with this video on Facebook and on YouTube and every place that you're going to see this. Strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to act now. Uh, again, we would just been talking to friends and we're already halfway sold out. Mm -hmm. This video is going live, so people are seeing it. I, I, I can see how many people are watching the stream now, and then the people who are going to see the stream in an hour when they get off of work. So, folks, please act now. Save your spot and get ready to have a really good time. It's going to be epic. Mm -hmm. We're going to be partying. Yes, the drone's going to be in the air. There's a good chance you might be on a, a future video, so get ready for that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should start having if people sign waivers. protection program. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. If you're in the Witness Protection Program, I'm going to advise you maybe <laughs> to think yeah, twice. Yeah, right, 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 right. 
Right. So, <laughs> but otherwise, or, or if you're down here, you know, <laughs> let me not get into some of the stuff I could get into. But if you're not on your best behavior, you know, just let me know. Um, <laughs> just let me know. Let me know. I'll keep the camera away from you. But it's going to be a good time. And since both of us were blessed with flags on the last trip, Yes. It is a really good chance. Panama has 7,000 islands. There's a really good chance we might just see something that we like and claim it as ours. <laughs> yes. The new the, the new uh, Christopher Columbus. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm yeah. discovering everything. Exactly. Not- yeah. Absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. And, and you know something? I want to say also that this year, this May coming up is a very special month. For Black expats in Panama, because it marks one year, y'all, since we've been doing these cultural relocation tours. And I mean, I think, yes, give it up. I mean, <laughs> it's like it was something brand new. It was a different concept. We've been able to support Black-owned businesses. We've been able to be philanthropic. You know, we donate to the West Indian Museum every time. We pick other um, nonprofits to donate to. We've helped so many people with uh, real estate questions and, and legal immigration status. We've connected you with doctors. We've built all of these relationships in the midst of COVID. We've been able to do that. We have never had a trip that was so small that it wasn't a significant trip. And um, so May is a very special month for us. May 1st, I still have a couple spots left. If you all want them, we always have somebody that booked that tour at the last minute. And so if you're trying to come on that May 1st celebratory anniversary tour, you can. That's May 1st, um, Black Expats in Panama Cultural Relocation Tour. May 3rd is our infamous, famous uh, Cultural Caribbean Day. If you want to do that, you can get your um, $50. Yeah, it's, it's the one you see all the videos about. Life-changing for folks. The place that everybody told us not to go. So right. we're, making it, we're making it rain in May because on top of that, it's Etnia Negra in Panama, which is they basically the Panama's Black History Month. So in addition to the things that Black expats in Panama are doing, there are just a ton of other things happening in the city and in the country at this time as well during the month of May. Then it's my birthday. Hey. Hey. Feliz cumpleaños. I'm going to turn 58 in Panama. My baby and her husband and my grandbaby are going to be here to celebrate with me. And that is just like, I mean, it's just a good time. Then to top it off, I don't know if y'all remember the cabaret, but I come from like the country and that party they used to have in the fire station most of the time <laughs> was the cabaret where you get a little bit more dressed up than usual. But we have on May 21st, we are having an old school cabaret um, featuring DJ Eric, J- J- I would say his name wrong, DJ Eric Jano. And he is actually a brother, a black expat here in the Coronado, Gorgona region. From right? around the way, DMV. We're helping each other. Huh? He's from Maryland. He's from around the way, yeah, Maryland. From Maryland. That's right. He's going to be our DJ. He DJed at the last event, Red Pill. So you, you see where we go? As our right. Afro Panamanian uh, tour guide, uh, Tio says, you see where we go? We're supporting each other, but we're going to have this amazing night, 70s, um, old school, 70s through 90s. And so something for everybody, because I learned that old school ain't the same thing for everybody. Okay. And so that is going to be on May 21st. Tickets, uh, we have early bird um, pricing for that up until April 30th. So if you want to go, I'll put a link in here when we're done uh, for some of that stuff. And I'll just put my link tree and you can see everything that's going on. So that's it. You got me shopping for an outfit. I'm, I'm I'm looking for clothes for the cabaret, by the way. You got me. Trying to get a new hat. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, for the cabaret, it's yes. all right with Pops of Africa, baby. Yes. You know? Yes. And so, yeah, so we'll be um, celebrating our one year, celebrating Etnia Negra. And then also on May 4th, we'll be launching our new social marketplace. So it's just a lot going on. You got a lot going it on. Will, I love you and I, I appreciate you know, working you. together with you and um, just can't wait to can see you soon. Likewise, Charlotte. I really love and appreciate you. I keep 
saying this to you, and I want to, you know, keep saying it to your face because I really feel it. You are modern day Harriet Tubman. You are leading people out of the darkness. We would not be here if it was not for you. Aww. We wouldn't have. We landed. We knew people because of your group. We knew what to do because of your group. You know, it was a very soft landing. We got our immigration attorney and everything. So yes. thank you for thank all that you do. Lot. And I thank hope that you, you continue to do it. And please let me know how I can help to continue thank to help you, you thrive you and know, grow. You know what? You and Sonia are very um, amazing supporters. And I'm glad to be able to support you in what you're doing as well, because you are doing a fine job, young man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Folks, we've been running our mouths for 45 minutes. That's probably I long enough. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I mean, I don't know. When, when we said we were going to do this, I was thinking 10 minutes. <laughs> That's and all look, right. But, but look, Will, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Here we are doing a thing. And this is what it's going to be like on, on the cruise, y'all. So. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what it's going to be like. So we still, forgot, we're still, we still forgot some stuff, but y'all get the gist of it. You have any questions? Oh, and yes, it's an opportunity for you to have some one on one time with, yes. with me and with Will. You know, when we're on these events, that's the best time to get that one on one time. Oh, my God. When we're in, yes, social, relaxed, you know, situation. Because, you know, right now, I mean, I, I know if Big Will is like me, probably from the time we've been on this, we both probably got 15, 20 messages, you know, but it's a good time for us to be able to relax and spend time with you. And so we do as many of these meetups as we can. Yes, we, yes, Lord. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, so. we still work. And, you know, mm -hmm. in between the work and I create content to do the show. Yes. So that's work, too. I got two jobs. <laughs> I do. And I think people need to know I don't even really work at other stuff anymore. Black Expats in Panama is my full time job. I had a screenshot the other day. I am spending over nine hours a day on on the Internet. And um, and I am not a TikToker. OK, I'm not a TikToker. I'm not a, a peruser. That is like working Maybe all day that. long. But I love what I'm doing. Just, you know, ask people to be patient as we continue. We have to change our platform and our guidelines to meet those, you know, expectations and the work, the work that we're doing to continue to bring you good content and information mm -hmm. and help to make that what you call a soft landing in another country. So we here for you. We here, we here. Yeah, I'm excited. I I'm going to get back to continuing to register for the marketplace right now because I got to create a page. I need to get my stuff yes. together so I can yes. have all the information ready for the peoples. For the peoples. <laughs> for the peoples. And this is a soft launch because what we're going to do is we're going to launch it soft but then after maybe about a month when we figured out any kinks and I'm, 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 I'm grateful for the people that are logging on, creating their profiles on the Black Expats Panama um, social marketplace that have you know arranged to have their pre-registration pre because then we're going to open it up and we're going to put it out there. We're inviting like over 3,000 people at once. So that is, we have, we have, you know, we're going to be inviting 3,000 people in addition to everybody else um, at once. Mm. So that's going to be amazing. a floodgate. So we need to be ready for that. And that's why I appreciate the people that registered early for the promotional, um, pr promotional memberships and stuff, because you're helping us to make sure that all of our stuff is excellent. And we got all of our kinks worked out because it's a new concept. It's a new concept. The business owners, people that have been trying to promote on Black expats in Panama, or better yet, people that have promoted. people You know who you are. People who have grown your business on mm -hmm. Black expats in Panama, you will have the opportunity to have a legit space on our, our social marketplace. And we're just trying to make it where you win, you win, you win, you win, and we win. How about that? Cooperative economics. Exactly. There it goes again. Exactly. Amazing how those simple... You know, 10,000 year old concepts yeah. <laughs> keep coming back into play. Coming back. coming back. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right, Big Will. Love you, guy. Love you, Charlotte, and everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks so much, and look forward to you guys joining us. All right.
Bye, everybody. Smooches. Happy Etnia Negra. Ah.